Oh, that's going 100 yards left. That was necky. Now, but see healy. what we're talking about with the swing plane value? So, so as that swing plane goes up, the it's face snap face. hook central. Yeah. Okay. So if you never want to hook it, you get that swing plane as low as you can. Which explains why Lee Trevino has like his and Ben Hogan across the and all those and guys. Go. Right. So, so oh, right, yeah. right now to not do that, I have to feel like I go like this. Yeah, but that's like a I steep come, cut. Oh, it is. I, so I don't want you to do a steep cut. I want a shallow cut. Okay. So you got to pull that left hip as far from the ball. Toad that. Okay. Check. Toad but that. hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep. Remember what I said. Okay, so fundamentally wise, yeah. you want to hit cuts, you got to stand, stand close closer. Okay. because you're pulling the hip away. Yeah. So you stand closer so you can back it. So you can hit it in the center of the face. So what yeah. just happened there is you set up normal to it, hit pulled the hip away yeah. and hit it dead off the toe. Yeah. Now that look at sense. the swing plane though. Yeah, it came way down. And for him, being taller, 52-ish would be a pretty good spot. That would be fine. Yeah. But I mean, there's a line there where the shot goes from hook to fade. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Just based on swing plane. Just based plane. on swing plane. So that, that magic line for him is probably around 53. Okay. So if he swings 53 or lower, it's probably a cut every time. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. The shark likes to cut it. He's like, he no, no, exactly. Go left. Yeah. Right. But, but the, I, way, the yeah. way we want to create the cut, though, is, is again, I don't want him to hit a steep cut with the arm. So a steep cut would make it spinny? Right. Well, and there's a lot of... Or if you ever flip it, you're left of yeah. left of left of yeah. left. Okay. Yeah. Right, but that shows up in the swing plane because really, okay, so think of it this way. If I don't turn my body, you see how everything stays out here. Okay, I see my arms? Yeah. So they're swinging on a very steep plane. Yeah. If I don't turn my body. True. If I turn my body, you see all of a sudden my arms get shallower. Yeah, they do, yeah. Okay, if I really turn my body. Even more. My arms get even shallower. So that's how you're making this get lower. So literally okay. just by turning, you automatically shallow it. Correct. Hmm. Right. So and and so takeaway is has a cause, but it's essentially irrelevant to shallowing as long as you turn your body. However, you take the weight, you'll still shallow. I mean, there's there's a little bit there for sure. I mean, obviously, you can have an upright swing plane or a, yeah. a shallower swing plane in the back swing. Okay. But a lot of times, for good players, when you feel a shot around the golf ball, mm -hmm. it's this relationship between rotation and not rotating. That's going to cause your arms and wrists to do different things. Okay. So as you sort of shallow that down, because there's a pull, remember we talked about that tension yeah, across the that, hip yeah. and the shoulder and the, and the lead forearm. Yeah. Because this is pulling, what that's doing is that's holding the club in check. Yeah. It's not allowing the face to collapse and go past. I see. Okay. Now, the more I stall or the more I stand up and this left hip's in front of me, there's no room there's for no my room. arms. This thing has to decelerate and do this. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, the club face snaps over and okay. I get a snap hook. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So Makes let's sense. do that again. Okay. okay. So I'm going to try and feel the same thing. I think I'm just yeah. going to keep my hands a little lower, get a so little low closer setup, to it. Okay. Yeah. Ball position forward yeah. and try and increase that spacing through impact. And I think his magic number is going to be 53, 54. There it is. Oh, come okay. on. Healy. But you see what I'm saying? You get it above 54, I bet you it draws. And see, it's I'll, funny, it felt and, like... And it really is a fine line. Oh, one degree. And especially at that speed, right? It's, right. Okay. Okay. So... Over here. Yeah. Feel a little tight. Got to get moving better. All right. Now, you made a great point there, Mark. Okay, so let's talk about that shot. Yeah. You made a great point a second ago. And yeah. early in the day when your body's cold, late in the day when your body's tired, yeah. often it's difficult to get the hips out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so usually those are the two times of the day where you're going to hit some flip hooks and yeah. some things like that. That's very true. Okay, yeah. well, on a nice warm summer day when your body's moving great, yeah. it's a lot easier because basically you'll see some of these conditions change. So. For some of the, the tour players and so on that we work with, you know, we're, we're testing them at different times of the day okay. to see what their swing plane values are at 8 a.m. versus 12 o'clock versus 2 o'clock versus 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening. Interesting. And often that swing plane number is fluctuating huh. because uh -huh. of the way the tissues in the body are changing. Yeah, interesting. Right? interesting. So 
that's a kind of a you know that's a whole nother project yeah but anyway so makes golf even harder than it already is right so when we look at that shot very straight little tiny cut here again we've got low point about 0 0.7 behind the ball yeah so we're hitting up on the ball about half uh, half a degree or so so yeah. almost virtually level yeah the swing direction was one degree to the right because we hit it up on it just a tiny little bit the mm. actual path was 0 0.5 so almost a okay. dead zeroed path Face angle was slightly open, a couple degrees open, so we just got a little tiny push cut. Yep. But I think, you know, flying the ball 295, hitting it 320 in play with that little fade would be quite a Abs nice absolutely. I'd be shot. For sure, I'd be happy okay. with that. So, okay, so question first. So if I move, if I hit up on this, let's say four here, and keep yes. all those values the same, what does that do to my swing direction? Okay, it's gonna move it more left. More left, so that would see a negative swing direction in okay. that, that position. Okay. In general, it's, well, Sorry, it's going to move the path more left. Okay, so I might technically the swing direction may be the same, but the path is going to go more left if you hit up on okay, it. Okay, so if I'm five up, I'd be three out here. It's also going to left. close the face a little bit. Okay, okay, so I got to be conscious of that. Okay, okay, okay. So you can. I yeah. mean, so let's do that. Move the ball position a little bit forward. Yeah. Handle down. Forward. Really low handle, a little bit closer. Okay. Okay. Same swing. We'll see what we get. High on the face, but it was pretty decent. Right. There's a straight, straight one. Okay, so pretty Still straight one. there. We see yeah. swing plane a little higher at 56. We see low point at 1.3. We swung two to the right. Path was one to the right. Face was actually really square there. Yeah. Uh, pretty efficiently straight there. Let's do that one more time. Yeah. Let's so, try the same thing. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and set up for me. Mm -hmm. Fade set up. Okay. Start there. Yeah, you guys want to see a hook. Okay. Actually, didn't feel too bad. Interesting. Okay. My attack now, angles. Remember what I said to a proper fade? You mm -hmm. want the face to be closed, closed yeah. to the target. Yeah. I'm so just... optically, I know that freaks you out a little bit. Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But because the handle was behind the club head. Okay. Okay, what that's doing, that's bending the path more left than the face was. Okay. Okay, so let's do that one more yeah. time. Yeah. So ball position forward, handle low, handle back. So you want the grip to point at your midline. Okay. From there, go ahead and stretch that hip. You're still standing too far. There. That was a better swing. Okay. Pretty close, pretty yeah. close. I want to see you create, if you can, though, I want to see that swing direction at zero. Okay. okay. I can do that. Now, but I want you to do that with properly with the... Okay. With the handle lower. Handle lower. Shot. Okay. All forwards. So, yeah, handle back, handle back, handle back. There. Okay, now regrip it. There you go. It's slipping right. Yep. Interesting, though. Okay, there's a fade every time. That's the though. first left path I've seen. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay so, so so let's talk about this, back. okay? Maybe this is a little bit of a, this goes beyond maybe the scope of this particular thing, but I want maybe viewers to understand a little bit the relationship between the setup and the, the, the ball flight here. So by putting the handle lower, mm -hmm. okay, what that's doing is that's tilting the D plane a little bit left so you get the start line left. Okay. By getting the handle back, that's bending the swing direction and the path more to the left. Okay. Okay. By standing closer, that's giving you room to pull the left hip away from you through impact. Still hit the center okay. of the face, yeah. So okay. if you stand too far from it, the only way to get to the golf ball is to early extend. Makes sense. Okay. So if you see early extension in your golf swing, it's something that you don't like. Yeah, get closer. Most of that's set up. Okay. Yeah. So if you feel like that club is between your knees, pointed yeah. at your uh, belt line Double, basically yeah. or yeah. lower than your belt line yeah okay but the handle is behind the club head you'll probably hit a fade every okay. single time okay interesting so then i'm going to aim a little more left knowing that i can <laughs> i'm not going to hit it left correct is a fade set. because for me for sure i've definitely like so think of it i mean in easy context as a good player how would you yeah. play a high bunker shot yeah that's exactly the way right handle gets low back correct. And, yeah you're right so the reason that works is because it creates a larger cut yeah. and an open face. Yeah, of course okay. it does. Yeah. So you always want to get ball position first, okay. handle position second, then grip it.
Okay. So okay. you shouldn't actually grip the club until you've achieved so you the ball that. position, the handle position. Okay. Right. Interesting. So this will cut every time now. Okay. It's crushed too. Fuck you. <laughs> now we see. No, I stood up. Yeah, a little bit, and you see the swing plane went up. Yeah. No, I, I could feel it. Like. Right. I couldn't. Everything stopped here. And then Everything where are your arms going to go? Yeah. Arms get thrown off. As yeah. they get thrown off, the face gets lost. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's why there's a correlation between that swing plane value. That's okay, so a handle down. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Now rip that pivot. Yeah, I was too far away from it now. Yeah. It's it's one of these times you'll move around. <laughs> right. I know. I get closer. It feels like I'm going to stand up, but I know I'm now, not. Now, actually, let's talk about that one for a second. Maybe, okay. maybe we won't use it, but this is probably yeah. some good. Uh, some good talk. So we see that one there, your swing direction, we're trying to hit this cut, actually you did go left. Yeah. You hit up on it 1.5, which then bent the path more left than that. Yeah. Okay, so the path was 2.3. The problem was the face was three open. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. now we have a five degree differential between the two and yeah. we have too much curve. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. But you did a great job with the swing plane value. Felt right? good about it that. Seems yeah. like your magic numbers for fades are 54 or less. Yeah. The draw was more like 56, 57. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So let's so, try that one more time. So my feel is just everything's got to be low. I got to get the hip kind of left and then let Absolutely. everything else just happen. But so much of that is in the setup. Yes. Okay. okay. So handle low. Yeah. Feel uncomfortably close to it. Okay. Now feel like you're getting further from it as you come into impact. Exactly. Good. So that one at least wasn't off the toe. No, it was bottomed. Right? A little off the bottom, but look at the swing plane. Yeah, exactly. And no, I, could, I could feel the difference there. And I could feel my like lower body kind of jump out of the way a little right. bit more. Which is why you see a lot of guys with that rainbow move. Yeah, exactly. What they're really doing with that yeah. is getting that left hip even more out of it. So way. they're really just pulling that really kind of out, right? There he is. So, all good. You want to watch me hit slices? I've never seen that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. So, right. hey, can we incorporate Dave in this video? No, we've already been seven hours here. All right, All right handle low. And hip it. goes back. Yeah, I want to get the other video. Oh, it feels different though. I know it's going to go left, but okay. it's interesting. Do one more. I haven't seen my swing. No, no, but okay. So, so watch me here, okay? Let's see the club. So when we're setting up for when we're setting up for that fade, yeah. we're gonna get ball position, handle position. Okay. Okay, so as I move the handle position back, the face is definitely closing a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it is bit. for sure, yeah. Okay, but because the handle is further back than the head, at that point in the swing, the club's gonna travel more, more left that way. than the okay. face is, which is what I really want to hit that very slight pull fade. Okay. So that's why I don't want you to set up there with an open face, yeah. because now I'm gonna hit a block fade. Of course, Okay. Yeah. okay. So we get this I set see. up, okay? Then we're gonna grip it. Okay. So the problem is if you make a grip and then bring and this then back, bring, yeah, really what gonna... you've done is close the face. Yeah, okay. You see what I'm saying? So effectively by doing this, I've weakened my grip without even knowing. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's gonna cut 100% of the yeah, time. Yeah, okay. And for a great player, that's what a great player wants, is if I hit a cut, it has to cut 100% of the yes, time. Yes, it does, yeah, it can't okay. go left. It yeah. can't go left. I see what you're saying, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to my life. All right, so let's okay, try so, the so ball position, okay, so, handle position. So I'm almost feeling like this is going to happen. Like it will. My, my right hand's going to pass through but a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, but I don't want you to help it. No, of course. Just, it's just going to happen naturally okay, because on. of setup. All right, so the so ball position, yep. handle position, okay. way too far away from it. There you go. There you Feel start. uncomfortably close. I know I do. There you go. Now, go ahead and pull that hip away. Okay, because it feels like I'm going to hit this right on the neck. Perfect. Well, you're you're incentivized to. Can't get it left. Does that make sense? So a good Square player is always going to find the center of the face or close to it. So if I stand him super close to it, the only way to hit the center of the face is he has to curve the hand yeah. path massively in, yeah. which is going to help him create his cut. Right? Okay. So that's why I said if I set up for a cut and I'm further far from it, then we end up in trouble. Okay. Okay. All right. One more. Yeah. Face closed. Good. Good. Felt better. Better. Okay. Let's do one more. Yep. 
Hmm. I tried to really hit up on that. I was successful. Well, it's not so much, obviously that's going to help you cut it, but the, the problem I think you've got to be careful with is hitting up too much. And this yeah, is no, why there is a correlation between a lot of the faders actually hit very slightly down, down on yeah, it. Yeah, because I could see my, my numbers. Because the kinda, more you hit up on it, what's happening in the swing plane? Well, yeah, exactly. It's going to go up and correct. I'm also going to release why that a lot face of times a little bit more. When players try and hit cuts and hit up on it, they double cross and hit a flip hook. Yeah, yeah. Because the swing plane goes up, which closes the face. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're swinging left with a closed face. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so back, so ball position, closer. handle position, very close to it. Okay. Let's now from that. there, just feel low, get that left hip out of your way. Good. Ooh. Closer. Felt better. Yeah. Swing plane better. Pretty neutral, really. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? There. Like neutral for Mark with his driver is around 54. Yeah. Okay, draw or block tends to be over that number. Yeah. And then our cuts are 53. Yeah, no, or, exactly. Or a little bit lower. Yeah, every, you're right. Because every time I have gotten that below that 54, 53 number, it's doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is good. Okay. All right. All right so last ball one. position. So I'm going to get closer. Handle position. Very close to it. Awesome. Great one. That was a good one. That one should be really good. There we go. Okay. Huh? Still a little high. Playing up a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hit up on it more? Yeah. It was hit up two. On it a more. Two point three. Yeah. Well, I can hit, like, I don't, if I'm, that, I don't want to use that one just for so, the practice. So if I'm allowed to hit down on this, I can do that. Well, hit down on it. Okay. Get a lower tee. Okay. Hit, hit a lower tee. Oh, I can. I can do it off this thing. Okay. All right, ball position, handle yep. position, then grip it. So I, see, the problem is I hate that right hand grip. Yeah. <laughs> when you put, no, but when you put it on there first and then yeah. don't change it. Yeah. So get the yeah, handle back, to... though. Get the handle back. Can't use that one. That's the best one I've hit. Right. And it went left. Now, I, I would say this that was probably a fractional toe. That was uh, it a, felt like that it. That was yeah. a fade swing all through and it, through. It felt like it for sure. Like that was perfect, right? Yeah, that one felt Level good. attack. Zero, 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 53. So that was probably here. a little gear effect toe ball. I would think so. Okay, All right, so one more. handle lower. It's going left too. Ugh, standing up. I yeah. can feel it. Look at the swing plane. I know. Let's see it. Interesting. Now, remember what I was saying. So uh, on tour, what we're seeing, right, is yeah. world-class values on swing plane are, are in within two degrees, yeah. shot to shot to shot. Yeah. Okay, we're seeing swing direction values, again, inside about one and a half degrees, yeah. shot to shot to shot. Yeah. That's presenting the face a certain way, Same time. shot Same to way. shot to shot. Yeah. And that's why they drive the ball so, so consistently. Mm. So when we see these changes and fluctuations in the swing plane and the swing direction, yeah. Okay, that's going to obviously throw off eventually, what the face does. Yeah, of course. Okay. And eventually there's going to be some bad ones. For right, sure. absolutely. Okay. So it's just being, that's why it's so being meticulous about that setup is so important. Yeah. The so ball, this, okay. position, handle Here position, low. grip it. There you go. Good, might have necked it a hair. I know, which I'm actually happy I'm, with. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I was going to say, it's everything's been under the toe. So yeah. that's better. That's see. That's the shot I don't agree with. Track man inside. Yeah. Watch well, this. Outside, I guarantee that oh, was a cut. No, a spin axis would be off. There. Right. Because if yeah. it sees it closed, because it hit off the heel. Exactly. So it projects a hook. I and it's like no. Every time. I can feel there's no way that was. Going. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. All right. So that was a good swing. Let's okay. do it one more time. The handle Let's low. Try one more time here. Right. Stretch it away. Nice. That was really nice, Mark. That was better. Yeah. Pulled that left hip away. Nice. There you go. All right, so let's talk about those numbers, Mark. That was probably okay. one of the best fades of the day here. Yeah. Uh, but we see that your swing plane value came down from the draws that you were hitting For earlier. Sure. Yeah. From 56, 57 on the swing plane, that one came down to our sort of our fade land yeah. somewhere around 53. Uh, our low point was two behind, which I think is probably probably as much up on it as I'd ever want to see you swing, yeah. to be honest with you. I agree with you. Uh, at your speed as a high speed player, you don't need to sort of hit up and out on it near as much. Mm -hmm. Obviously hitting the ball in play is probably more paramount to you. Absolutely. Okay. More scoring for sure. So I love that low point. Uh, swing direction was 0 0.9 to the right. And this is where I want the viewers to really understand this. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
even though you swung very slightly to the right because you hit up on it 1.9 degrees, your path was actually left. left. Interesting. So you actually crossed the, the line, mm -hmm. even though you made a draw swing from the inside, by the yeah. time you hit the golf ball, the face was actually traveling left 0 0.3. Yes, okay. And you hit a very, very tiny little cut there because of it. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if we could reproduce that all the time, uh, it'd be, yeah, it'd be you'd be looking for uh, you'd be looking for a new gig. I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. No, and, and I think like just to talk about that too is like that swing plane feels dramatically different than the the one I normally start with, right? Like for me at fifty six, that feels pretty comfortable, and then this feels like it's ten degrees lower, right? Mm -hmm. So right. even those couple of degrees, there's a big feel with with me as a player, right? I feel like everything is kind of lower, and I'm lower in, in a and much drag different position. Left and oh yeah. All yeah. of those feels exactly, yeah. and and that's you know, and that totally changes what the face is doing through the golf ball for sure. Yeah, and that's why we, if we can, we want to try and create those fades and draws primarily through setup. setup. Yeah, and then if we can, you know a little bit from the setup, and then there's some feels maybe with the bigger muscles around the golf ball, okay. as opposed to trying to feel in the hands and the arms all yeah. the time. Okay. Uh, obviously, as a talented player, you can create the shots with your hands. Yeah. But there's always a trade-off. Generally, when we have a steep cut, yeah, is usually you know the, the overcut becomes too spinny, out of control. Yeah. And every once in a while, it'll flip on you because the swing plane gets too high, and you'll hit a left, left to left. Yeah. And at that point, you know, we're looking for you know, re t re t yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. Uh, okay. No, and, and I agree. And I think that's something like obviously different than what I'm, I'm doing right now to make certain shots happen. But I feel like I can kind of groove that. It feels like it's uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong. But I understand. I think understanding kind of the science behind it helps me totally believe it. Right. And go, OK, that makes sense. So I have to just create these feels for myself to me make that happen more often. So, yeah, and that's um, one of the reasons I really like teaching on track, man, okay. is being able to take things like we did to your setup. Mm -hmm. and be able to quantify those. I knew what it was going to do to, yeah. to all of those numbers, but it's nice to see it. For sure. Uh, to sort of obviously quantify my teaching. <laughs> Absolutely. But also to say, okay, hey, if we just make this little tweak, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty easy for you to hit that little cut that you want to hit. Yeah, it, yeah. And then, you know, when you need that power draw, you've got a hard wind left to right, you're trying yeah. to draw it against it. You know what the numbers should be on your on what felt like a little bit more of your natural movement, yeah. which was definitely a little bit more on the draw side of the spectrum. For sure, and do it with setup more mm -hmm. than anything. Primarily with setup, okay. exactly. Good, no, I like that, that's good. Fantastic. Awesome, I will take that every single time. So, um, I'm shorter than these guys, what, that might explain some of the swing plane stuff that Scotty was talking about. Yep. Um, a lot of info there, I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot of questions, so fire away questions at smashfactory.ca. Scott, is there a best way for them to get a hold of you as well? Come follow me on uh, Scott Coke Certified on Instagram. It's probably the best place to, uh, to see material, see great swings, and, and uh, some of the information uh, that we talked about today. A lot of knowledge bombs there. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of good info on, on Scott's page, so definitely go check it out. You tired? He made you work hard. I know. I'm, I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got more to come, uh, a lot more knowledge. We're going to milk Scotty for everything that he wants to give us today, and... Uh, I'm sure you, all of you golf geeks out there are going to enjoy what he has to talk about. So we'll guilt him into coming back. Yeah. Thanks, all right, guys. Take care. Thanks. Bye.